<laughs> I might change my mind about that actually now that I think about it. But thank you, Brian. All right. Uh, th welcome everyone to the Thursday, May the fifth edition of the Scurf Community Call. Uh, in these calls, we have chats about things that uh, Scurf is up to. Uh, we get engagement from uh, the wider community, trying to keep people in the loop. Uh, talk about some of the interesting and uh, uh, well, the interesting. Uh, projects we have on the go and get people interested in joining in with those projects and offering some insights uh, that they might uh, be able to provide us and get them engaged with the process. Today's theme is going to be all about source cred. Um, we want to talk about what uh, the path leading up to where we got today, uh, some of the th new things that have happened in the forum recently, and some of the directions we want to take it in the future. Um, the great thing about source cred is it, it represents um, a lot, oh, actually a whole basket of ethical conundrums and coordination problems and ethical or not um, me uh, mechanism design challenges. And it's critically important to SCURF that we get as many inputs and opinions from people as we can possibly get. Um, the, <clears throat> the goal of, well, actually, yeah, maybe, yeah, I'm just going to spice it up. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about any of my ethical conundrums. I am going to just interrupt Paul ruthlessly as he begins to do his presentation. I would encourage everybody else to do the same, though, because I don't want to be the only person asking questions here. So if you do have uh, something uh, interests you, you have a question, there's two paths open to you. You can type it into the sidebar, and we'll uh, read it out for the uh, benefit of people watching the video later. Or you can just stick up your hand and then we'll pause and then we'll uh, get you to ask your question on the mic, which is the preferable route. But if you prefer, if you want to do the uh, chat, feel free to do that as well. All right. I think I'm going to hand it straight off to you, Paul. And you can uh, tell us about Scurf's first entrance into Web3 and what that's going to look like. Yeah, I am excited to do that. Uh, I If I do hear the hand raise, um ding i will finish my sentence and then um, pause if you're presenting so you can't see the hand raise i do don't think i can see the hand raise because i have this so if i hear the ding i'll just yeah. stop if i hear the um chat stuff i'll keep going until someone gives me a hand raise ding okay we have to do a verbal thing as well on the hand raise i mean now i kind of want that all right, we'll see how it works out. Huh? <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, as Rich had mentioned, uh, today I'm going to do uh, gonna do my best to do a pretty brief, quick presentation on how do we get to where we are with source cred, where we are with source cred right now, and um, to me, maybe more excitingly, where we can go with this in the future and how we as a community can use this as a tool to do neat Web3 stuff and experimenty stuff. Um, as a just kind of general, like one of the places we're going to try to create a space uh, for people to be able to look at resources that exist. Uh, right now, it's going to hang out uh, here is kind of like a README file on our GitHub and the source head source cred part of our GitHub so that people who are kind of joining SCURF later in the future would be able to kind of see where we have been and where we are heading. So there would kind of be a how to source cred or why we have source cred. So a historical uh, record is gonna be kept kind of here. Uh, that might not be the ultimate place that it stays, but that's where it's going to be for right now. Um, leading into the, how did we get here? Uh, so we have had some really good conversations on the forum. So to me, that has been very valuable of like, we're thinking about doing this thing. Let's get some community input. Uh, the discussions about who gets paid, how can we get paid, uh, what do we want to be promoting, what do we want to be encouraging, uh, maybe less discouraging, but mostly just encouraging and incentivizing has been kind of central to this whole discussion about source cred. We did have a community call about almost exactly a month ago where we also got a whole bunch of really good insights into kind of what was going on. And particularly, we had some really good discussions about nodes and edge weights and those materials we'll also kind of keep in that github um, repo space so that uh, people who want to see how we got to where we got uh, have access to that as well based on that brian myself and rich 
uh, have been having some additional conversations and eventually we put together kind of a poll uh, that showed up in this second thread. So these both still exist on the forum. Uh, if you have not had an opportunity to kind of get the historical know-how of why we made some of the choices that we did, uh, these both exist. And one of the things I'm going to try to do is connect these two things together. Um, and we're right now going to con continue chatting in both of these, uh, but particularly the, the polls and first implementation. And I think that is a hand raise, so go right ahead. It wasn't I faked you. I, I was just asking Brian to drop the links in the chat so people can uh, boost open a second window if they want or save them for later. Cool. Uh, this is also, I believe Brian put this in the community talk channel in Discord in our chat. So you should be able to find this deck in the chat as well. Um, and this will also go in the forum. And at the very end, there's a whole bunch of links. So now I know that chat and hand raise sounds the same. All right, so we have these resources. We had really good discussions about what we're doing. We, I think, did a decent job of kind of soliciting input and community general consensus. Now we have a poll. Here's our poll results. So for those of you who did not have an opportunity to kind of check this out the other day when this closed, uh, the two poll questions that we had was one, basically, how much are we going to allocate? and We've decided we're going to start with 5,000, right? So this is very interesting to me of not just, you know, how much we're going to do this, but how are you going to allocate this out, right? So I, in some ways, I'm pretty pleased that we picked the 5,000 amount because I think that gives us a little bit more wiggle room. I'm kind of hoping that that is where uh, other people were, what other people were thinking too, right? So more money gives us an opportunity to kind of see what this does in uh, larger impact ways. Well, the second thing had to do with all the nodes and the edges uh, in our specific instance. So uh, this is something that we talked about a lot in the community call. Uh, if you are interested in kind of really digging into the difference between these, if you go to the poll thread itself with the links in the poll thread, you should be able to see how each of these are uh, differentiated from one another. Um, we are basically uh, really privileging and rewarding, incentivizing content creation with the one half content option that we have gone with. Uh, so we as a forum are interested in producing content and having summaries and discussion posts uh, and that type of stuff being more rewarded uh, as opposed to kind of getting references and likes and things along those lines. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. Again, this is just our initial one. So I imagine uh, as we kind of develop our use of source cred that we will make some changes to some of these things and just see how it kind of works. Uh, this is our first go. And I could not be more appreciative of everybody who contributed to this conversation and voted and kind of weighed in so that we can get to where we are today. So with this allocation, um, we now have a future thing to do. So. We're not just starting source cred saying, hooray, source cred is here. We'll never touch it or think about it again. Uh, one of the things that we want to make sure is that this is a community managed uh, instance that we think about this, we explore what this is and is not doing. So we are gonna start a community committee, uh, a source cred community committee. So for those of you who are interested and I'm hoping to attract more people, um, we're gonna have this meeting that happens on the second Friday of every single month um, from 10 to 11 Pacific time. Um, and that will be a bot and a part of our calendar. So you'll see that. And we would like to see plenty of people come into this so that this can be maintained over time. So we got to this place where we have implemented source cred. Now we want to manage and change and kind of self-direct what source cred does for us and be data-driven people and really kind of do the Web3 stuff that we are saying that Web3 does, right, by getting communities to be able to do some self-governance. And so this is going to be at least our first shot at this. Uh, obviously, this can also, this time can change, but this is kind of where we're going to start. So I strongly encourage people who are very interested in what source cred is doing kind of sort of interested in what source credit is doing or uh, source cred curious uh, to start coming into these uh, meetings where we can discuss what was it that 
this last month did or this last instance did or is this the correct amount of money do we need more do we need less what types of things are happening well what types of things are not happening well um, i'm going to be coming to these meetings at least um, initially um, probably long term i will also be coming to them because i have a very strong interest in making sure that the moderation practices that we are trying to do on the forum are matching or supporting what source cred is also incentivizing so uh, i know that i and the rest of the engagement team have our eyes on some specific posts because we're going to be interested to see what that does long term and those are types of discussion points i'd like us to be able to have in these community committees um so you will be seeing these pushed in a chat as well so i strongly encourage people to show up the stuff that we'll be talking about will probably revolve around A, these scores, and then B, we'll talk about allocation in a moment. Um, but essentially, these scores will be put up in a public space. Right now, it'll be in this Google Sheet. Uh, I think we can also put this up in our GitHub so that people have access to it. Uh, but this is essentially going to be, every single month, we'll kind of run the script and it'll generate what is that cred score and then also what is that percent of total cred that has been generated by our forum um, and, and it'll kind of be by username and so this will be a public thing um, that people will be able to see uh, one of the discussion points that we had in that community call as well as um, just kind of in the um, forum posts was do we want this to be kind of very quick turnarounds right so we could obviously do source credit just measures what a person did this last week versus we could look at what it does for all time and in kind of that discussion we've kind of gone with a, let's start at least with a all-time scurf um, cred and percent cred uh, implementation that's going to obviously have some impact on how allocation works which i'll get to in a moment uh, but we kind of feel like from the feedback that came from the community that this was something that people were interested in kind of that long-term reward as opposed to instant uh, even in like one month uh, incentivizing quick attacks of behavior uh, as opposed to long-term behavior um so will you be able to see your credit scores this way it'll be public we can kind of see if it is doing what we expect it to be doing as far as generating and flowing cred through edges uh, we're then also going to obviously financially incentivize this right so it's neat to have a score it is even neater to get paid for your contributions so uh, you'll see in the chat there is a opportunities with scurf channel in that opportunities with scurf channel you'll see a source cred opt-in section every single month you will need to opt in if you would like to get a payout on your cred score uh, the very first time that you do this you will need to fill out a form that's basically just making sure that we have a wallet that this can go to, making sure that it can accept DAI, but you would only have to do that one time. You'll get some, we'll be also doing some automated bots to remind people to do this uh, probably more than once uh, throughout the month because we want to make sure that people who would like to receive DAI for their contributions have that opportunity. So we basically created an opt-in system. Um, and again, this is kind of based on some of the conversations that we'd had as a community. That means, though, that there are some people who are not going to be getting paid out on that, and we had to figure out how to do this. And uh, I believe that this is one of the questions that was somewhat asked in the Triple P meeting uh, yesterday. Um, and Brian had kind of like really worked through this, and I think we've come to a pretty interesting and at least initially elegant-ish type of solution. Uh, so essentially, when we're using source cred, like everyone is impacting the total cred percentage. We're not paying everybody though uh, who has some cred. Um, so with this opt-in system, uh, we have essentially have said like, so some people are gonna opt in, other people who might be very influential uh, in what is happening on our forum may not have opted in. So what do we do um, since we're not gonna be paying them? We've essentially come up with this idea of a return pool. So in essence, someone who is contributing a lot in the forum but has not opted in right their what would be allocation of the 5000 die gets returned to a return pool and then everyone who did opt in in addition to their payout for their contributions we'd evenly divide what's in that return pool to everybody else so this is kind of like the big overall view uh, this is an example because to me it's uh, easier to do things via example so 
if we had had this scenario and we had the 5,000 die, we had four total people. So the top four people uh, are the ones who opted in uh, for this particular month. You'll see that uh, we'll have a we have people who have not contributed or have not opted in, right? So that's going to generate what the uh, die return pool is. Uh, I'm sorry, I skipped the step. So we take this cred percentage and apply that to the die pool. We would do that for everybody, whether or not they opted in or not. That then produces this die return pool. We want to make sure that that die return pool is not kind of counted in. Um, what these people's allocations, people who did opt in, what they would get. Um, so we kind of subtract that from the overall die pool and then basically divide it by the number of people who have opted in so that everyone gets a chunk of what that return pool is. Um, and we kind of feel like this, A, helps us to continually recognize the impact of past behavior, sorry, so that it's not um, as volatile uh, of a system as it potentially could be if we did it on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, but it is also doing something uh, with that die and kind of rewarding people for being in our community as well, um, so that you are getting allocation not just on your individual contribution to the forum, but also just by opting into the system. And I believe that that is a question. Yeah, um, so I'm thinking about this after like let's say one round of payouts does the next round of payouts include all of the previous activity or only between payouts because that's where i'm like two four six the top seven people on this list if they continue active like to be active then they could perpetually stay the top seven on the payout list which is not you know if that's the way it works and that's the way it works, but that's where I'm trying to figure out, is there a way so that once this payout happens, does it like reset the cred count for the next payout or does this just add on to the cred? So the cred is gonna be cumulative or at least right now we have it set up so that the cred would be cumulative. Um, however, uh, with the emphasis on content creation, um, I think, we would still see movement uh, in the top seven, let's say, um, on a monthly basis, especially if SCURF is accomplishing the content production goals that we kind of generally have in mind. Um, this is one of the places where I'd like us to, or this is one of the key questions I'd like us to kind of be addressing with this source cred community committee though, because we can do some interesting stuff like you were mentioning of you could um, erode past like once a, a cred instance gets or not a cred instance once a cred node gets to a certain age uh, maybe it decays more quickly um, there's a whole bunch of kind of decay things that we could be doing um, this initial instance does not have that in it as far as i know um, as far as i believe because i don't think we did that um, just for kind of simplicity and like initial running yeah, one other thing I can, oops. If I could jump in super oh, quick. Ahead, so th this is one of the reasons why we're super excited about the notion of a committee of uh, community members. These, There's a lot of tweaking and a lot of uh, configuration. There's some deep thinking that still needs to be done. And so we want to sort of hand those decisions off to the people that are actually managing the treasury and getting the rewards from the system itself. I just wanted to quickly comment on the way it's calculated. So every time that cred rank gets calculated, it starts fresh, but it does cumulatively add up everything that happened. And then you can view those results along different time scales. So you can, which is what we're doing currently, review it from the beginning to the end, but you can also slice it by month or by week. And I think there are even other ways you can slice it. But so the idea is that we can look at the cred ranks relative to the last month activity. Yeah, I think there are some really interesting um, hybrid options. Um, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that we can do. Um, and so I, I'm going to echo Rich here. I'm excited to see what we do uh, end up making changes and how we do that type of stuff. Um, but I think that right now the, the initial instance was let's make it pretty straightforward, workable, because once you have something that's workable, then you can start to sculpt it. 
before I go forward, which I do not think I have much more to go into, um, but I just want to make sure that we don't have other questions about kind of this idea of the return pool or those mechanics. Uh, yeah, just one thing I was going to mention is these numbers are completely made up for demonstration. Just wanted to point that yeah. out. And the reason why cred is sort of blanked out there is because it ultimately is not relevant to the calculation. It's the percentage. Percentage is something that gets uh, generated by the cred rank uh, algorithms or whatever you want to call it that produces these numbers. So in the spreadsheet, you'll see both your individual cred and your percent cred as outputs. So um, what, when we actually go to calculate the die, it's the cred percent that matters. Yep. Thank you. Cool. All right. So these are the resources that I mentioned before. These are all in um, the slide deck that is also in the chat. Um, so I guess we don't actually have to look at those. Kind of where uh, I'm very excited, like I just was saying, uh, to see kind of what we do with this. I want to make sure that everyone has access to stuff, that we have kind of clarity of things. Um, and the first meeting would be, is it next week? Next week, Friday. Um, would be the first of the source cred committee, community committee meetings. Um, and I'm really hoping that a whole bunch of people who are in this call show up. And now let's like dig into it. All right. Um, so this is the Q and A session. So please, uh, think about any questions that were raised in that presentation um, and let us know what they are. Um, there's some interesting things to dig into here. Uh, this is an example of a community managing its own treasury, which I find uh, enormously compelling as an idea. And it's a model that we want to continue to explore at SCURF. So we have a committee, the SCURF, I mean, the source Great committee, I'm sure we'll come up with a agenda item number one is a more pithy name for that, I suppose. but um uh we want to recreate that model with uh potentially with grants programs or with um uh coordinate circles or, or peer rewarding circles um uh potentially even expand it to more governance decisions in the future as we continue to explore the web3 space um there's also a lot of things to understand about how uh what type of content does scurf want to or does do, do the content generators at scurf um want to reward and how do you determine whether something is meritorious or has value or not there's a lot of interesting questions to be understood there um, there's going to be an opportunity to figure out how to expand this project as well and so uh, source cred actually it occurs to me that maybe not everybody in the call understands what source cred is so maybe I'll do that quickly so the idea is that um, when you do activity in the forum when you do a great comment when you do a great post um, and that gets a lot of re uh, replies or likes or gets quoted in other locations there's other there's lots of different things that can happen as uh, the community interacts with the post uh, it acquires points basically and as those points accrue at the end of the month um, they get converted to die and then there's a, a crypto payout for uh, uh, members uh, that have opted in so that's great so the question becomes um, well that's an interesting mechanism but what do we do about um, uh, regular scheduled posts like the research posts or a roll up of um, everybody's posts in the chat that ends up in the forum or what do we do about uh, simple notifications that um, might not might not uh, be enormously creative or have a, ton, a long tail of interactions, but gets a lot of likes or something. So there's lots of interesting things to discuss there. Um, but there's also, and this is one of the things I think is potentially the most interesting part of this, is that um, this mechanism can be expanded beyond uh, just the form. Uh, source code works in a bunch of different locations. Uh, so we could potentially hook it up to GitHub itself. So when people are, are doing pull requests or commenting on issues or doing other activities in GitHub, they could gain cred as well. We can, um, well, actually I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't get too detailed on this last next point because I don't know how it works. I only know that I've heard that it can. Uh, you can plug it into the chat as well. And so are there, uh, activities that we want to reward people for in chat and what would those things actually look like um, 
then there's things we can think about too, like, oh, hold on a second. If we have a reading group or we have open peer review or we have some kind of specific kind of content type we find tremendously compelling, but we also realize that it takes time and effort to create, maybe we can apply this to that mechanism as well. So it's not just generalized content creation, it's engaging with a peer review process or adding or creating a series of notable works. And we know that notable works for a problem space require uh you know research to to dig these things up that's there's work involved with that so maybe there's an additional weighting with things that the ecosystem um places a higher value on so there's lots of interesting um experiments that we can perform here but john you had a question do you want to ask uh, ask that out or do you want me to read that Hey, uh, so I just wanted to know how that would work with new, um, you know, new people in the forum, because we have like researcher grantees and just people joining the Discord. So just like how all the system, like, uh, how do you see that working together? Yeah. So uh, one of the reasons why we have the return pool or the idea of the return pool is so if you just come to Scurf, uh, even if you leave like the world's greatest comment or you you post the world's greatest post. Um, you're not going to get like um, um, you're not going to go right to the top of the leaderboard. At least the way that right now we have this um, instance set up. However, even if you didn't do much, or or you did that great post, but you opt in, right? You would reap the the benefits of the return pool. So if you are brand new to Scurf and you want to be part of kind of getting some payouts on the or from from source cred like opting in would make you eligible to be part of that return pool <clears throat> um i think one of the things that we got a lot from the community call was a desire from our community to incentivize coming to scurf but being at scurf and contributing over a period of time uh, as opposed to trying to incentivize showing up being a rock star for an hour and then taking off again and so as a result i think that's why um you can you can get benefit uh from day one of coming to scurf potentially uh, but you get more benefit over time as opposed to um single instances so they would be eligible by opting in um, but they're probably they're, they're certainly not going to be on um, top of the leaderboard is part of the mechanism here that so this comes down to the window in which rewards are allocated. So if it um, starts at the beginning of the month and then it clears itself out at the end of the month, it doesn't necessarily reward stickiness, I guess. And one of the interesting reasons why we use a forum is archaic uh, platform, as that might seem to this brave new world that we live in. It allows for long tail discussions. And so uh, we like it when people come in and resurrect a six month old post um, or three months because just because something is old doesn't mean that there's no more information to be gleaned or no more interactions there. So um, it's when we're picking what that what that uh, window is, it, part of that discussion can be how far back do we look and how much of a long tail are, is allowed here. So is, um, some kind of uh, a decay, I suppose, over primarily this month, but then some of last month or maybe two months ago, I guess, could be something that people think about as well to reward uh, stickiness and sort of uh, incentivize people not to churn, I suppose. Does this okay. seem to warrant like potentially two types of payouts uh, in that, um, not to say that we need it, but if there's one that we're, if there's one that tracks the source credit and rewards long tail and one that tracks like immediate that those are two different reward mechanisms using the same system that both potentially have use and that's where i'm like i looking at the system it does seem to me to have a benefit for both to be in place if possible in that someone who has long tail potential uh might not post as frequently but they'll check in on their post whereas someone who's trying to get likes or clicks immediately uh is going to have a different posting style so that's where i'm like those those two types of posters 
are completely different, but both have value to the forum. And those like having both of those types of payments in place could potentially uh, attract both. Yeah, I, I have some thoughts on that, but Brian, go ahead first. Yeah, thanks. It's an interesting idea. And just from a technical perspective, you're absolutely, there's really no reason we can't do it. And uh, so um, this is more of an open question to anybody. This is this is exactly what we would love to have a deeper dive into during our, our monthly. And so if anybody has that kind of a question, feel free to approach me and we can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and I can actually go in and run so the source cred rank algorithm calculations and provide you raw data for these theoretical uh, positions that you might want to take. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something for anybody can take advantage of uh, talking to me. And then also, it's actually not that hard really uh, to run it yourself. And if you know how to use the command line a little bit, like I can also show you how to do it yourself if you'd like. Yeah, and I wanted to add on top of that, that and this is a good reminder um, that we've kind of talked about before is when it comes like, what we are incentivizing on the forum source cred is not the only tool or lever that we have to incentivize certain types of behaviors uh i'm excited that i think he's still in this call um that woodrow is here um because we are working on building the comment of the month back up right and to that you know person who like you showed up you did just some great stuff and source cred is going to lag. Um, but we as human beings get to make human being types of decisions and say like, that was awesome. Like that deserves to be rewarded immediately. So we have those types of incentives. Uh, we also have a whole moderation team uh, that can help look for disingenuous patterns of behaviors, right? Like, like there's some human touch here as well. Like, so we're trying to curate a forum and uh, source cred, I think, is one of the many tools that we're going to end up using, some more qualitative than others and some more subjective than others. And as a community, I think um, we benefit from balancing the use of a variety of tools. Oh, and then real quick to Loretta's question in there about the drop dead date. Uh, so source cred would basically like our first disbursement of funds based on source cred score uh, would be the end of this month and you'll see some um, announcements and stuff like that uh, but if you are interested in participating in source cred at this point make sure you go to the opportunities with scurf part of the chat and go to the source cred opt-in channel and fill out the first time form and then also click the reaction uh, for uh, opting in for the month of may yeah, just as a quick follow-up point, um, that channel will be a permanent part of <clears throat> of of our chat as long as in in Discord as long as this uh, source cred experiment is running with this setup. And you'll need to go there every month, and there'll be a new role, a reaction role to click on. So we're going to have one for May, and then we'll have one for next month. So you'll have to go back and click the reaction to join. And we, I think the cutoff that we're going to have is like I don't know a couple of days before the end of the month. We haven't actually settled on a specific day or cutoff day. But as long as you go in there and, and click that reaction rule, you should be good to go, assuming you've already filled in the first time form. In case people are wondering about that mechanism, it's a dis uh, we had a discussion about um, trying to uh, target the pool of uh, um, I was about to say contestants, that's the wrong word for it, applicants, um, to people that are actively engaged in the forum. And so um, there's a risk that somebody might come in, uh, write an absolute banger or a post, and then uh, you know forget that they were arrived at Scurf and never come back. And then that uh, cred allocation would get um, locked, basically, or abandoned. And so the best mechanism that we've come up with, at least for launch, is the the notion that uh, every month there's an opt-in. But I would be very ex interested to hear from the committee as they begin to think about some of these implications and the friction of getting involved with the process versus um, making sure that the candidates, that's the word I was looking for, the, the candidates are, are actual, um, there's some kind of proof of liveness there where we know that we're actually going to be able to allocate these funds. There's 
a question that I would want the committee to consider is um, the from a high level, the mechanism we have here is that we um, when people contribute to our forum and that represents work, we are absolutely dedicated to paying people for that work. And so if people are doing posts and they're doing comments, we have lots of frameworks and lots of initiatives and lots of teams they can join in order to do that. Um, they can also just hit us up or we will find them potentially sometimes saying that like, uh, that's a great post, submit your invoice. We know that that took you hours to do. Um, and so we'll pay people, but we also want the community to have an opportunity to allocate its own funds. There's all kinds of um, philosophies around uh, uh, collective ownership and collective decision-making processes that I am very interested in. And I know for a fact that Paul is based on his history in the workforce. Um, so we want the community to have an opportunity to reward itself for its own activities and get some investment in the space. Um, but, uh, the question becomes what happened. So we want to create these incentive mechanisms that a, there's a baseline, uh, reward or, uh, funds available for doing work at SCURF. There's also the community generated, um, stack on top of that through source cred where additional funds can be allocated. And so we're rewarding our core contributors this way. Um, the question becomes, what do we do about those one-offs? that come by and do these the, the full, uh, banger posts. And we want those people to continue to engage with us. Um, so can we use source credit as being a mechanism of like, well, hey, Scurf is a place that actually values uh, the time and effort you took to come here, come back and do more of whatever it is that you did that impressed us so much. And so um, we, I would love for the community to think about, okay, well, if you have to opt in to a chat that you may or may not know even exists, you're, you're what are we going to do about these these quick hit or these people that, that join the forum, make a post and then leave? How do we get them back and encourage them to make more posts and use source credit as a mechanism to do that? That is a question I do not have an answer to. And I would love for the community to figure that out for us. Sean, you um, raised a note here in the sidebar. I'm going to read it out and then I'll, I'll get you to comment on this. Um, so this reminds, as Jean says, this reminds me a lot about Steemit. Uh, was anyone else using Steemit? And yes, I did. And Steemit for me is, well, I hope there's no Steemit members and or fans here because I'm about to say some mean things about Steemit. Um, in my mind, this is uh, kind of like the, the canonical example of a failed experiment when it comes to uh, aligning incentives on content ge uh, generation. So when you create um, any kind of a mechanism where you're incentivizing a certain behavior, um, you strip this thing way down to its bare essentials. And the only logical thing to do is to do the minimal amount of effort for the maximum amount of reward. That's, you have to use the system to drain money out of that system. Um, it's a mercenary way of looking at life, but hey, this is the, this is crypto and it's an ecosystem. And if you build it, yeah, it has to be adversarial. So um, what we want to do is the opposite of steam it actually with the same sort of mechanism. So we want people to put in uh, the maximum amount of effort for the maximum amount of reward um, and uh, relying on an algorithm to make all those decisions for you. And with piles of like in, uh, referral codes and uh, uh, collusion and all of the other uh, fascinating but dramatic and failed experiments that steam it went through. Um, but that's, those are other questions that we would love for the committee to uh, think about deeply. So how do we continue to uh, reward good content without uh, allowing for the specter of gamification to come in? So, I was, sorry, Jean, I said I was going to hand it off to you, but then I gave a great big speech and I read your question. So is there anything else that you wanted to say about Steam? Uh, no, not really. It's more like I will just uh, guess I need to think about like how we um, structure our system and what we want as a behavior, but also like what Paul says that we have different levers to pull is actually very interesting compared to Steam because it was just like, yeah, basically like game theory, but they didn't um, act on it. And then in the end, it was just like, you had some people making money and some others just being part of the community. But what thing that was very cool with Steam though, is just like, it was a really, a really, really cool community. 
even though you know a lot of people didn't make money and everything a lot of people stayed there for like a while trying to do something mm -hmm. uh so that's kind of like also like what is interesting to know like like how they actually made it so that people were still like engaged and everything even though there was not the money uh you know side of it so so yeah so so I hope like since we are doing research and everything will be like totally different and then we have different structure and different ways to do it, but just like it's main example we have of you know a system where you have people contributing on for kind of like a forum with comment and everything and pay and everything. So yeah. It's my expectation that it's scope and culture that's the differentiator for us. And so Steam it was okay. Well, A, I shouldn't be so mean to them. So it was a fascinating, it was a great experiment. It was very, very early. Um, and the challenge that they adopted was uh, mind bogglingly uh, large. So, how do you get the world to talk to each other in a way that has incentives built into it? Um, that's huge. Um, I couldn't imagine trying to sort that out. So, that should be fair. Uh, it's my belief that it, for SCURF's purposes, we have a very tight knit culture. We have a very niche demographic and the type of content that we're looking for by its very nature requires thought and effort. Um, and so I'm not terribly concerned about gamification in our world. It, um, it may happen, but in my experience, um, you can go down a lot of really dark roads. Like I've, I've been involved with um, e-commerce a lot in the past and in the e-commerce world, um, you can have entire floors filled with people who do nothing but look for uh, skews and numbers and graphs and try to determine whether somebody's messing with your system or not. And then you can just build out a thousand different systems, both real or imagined or potential threats and stuff. Uh, it's kind of a fun game to play if you're into cloak and dagger stuff, but I don't think we need to worry about it all that much uh, where we're at right now. So I think that a, a committee meeting regularly would be able to go you know what uh we're giving our waiting is too high on, on likes it's just too easy so we need to try another experiment or let's add this other tweak uh with the sliders on on source cred maybe see what that experiment turns out to be so i'm not super concerned yeah i'm kind of echoing some of the stuff that chris has been saying about you know moderation being one of our uh big differences here um and just that you know, so from our um, the period of time that we're looking through, right? So we have moderation, and I also think that longer scope looking backwards, in some ways, disincentivize. Like, so while it makes it harder for brand new people to start benefiting from our implementation, it also makes it significantly, or I think it makes it significantly harder for someone to just kind of try to come in and instantly benefit from some gamification as well. Um, it's you know, per source cred's own documentation, gamification is obviously something that human beings can do with pretty much anything if they'd really like. Um, it's just effort versus reward. And I think right now there's a lot, there's high effort to try to gamify what scurf has got going on um, because of all the different mechanisms we have. And I know that there's Chris a... wants to test that. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably gonna red team us with that even with that or not. Actually, you are, aren't you, Chris? I want to. You it's start. happening right now. Like I'm sure it He's is. Gonna boost up a fake account and try and game the system on it. I'm watching you. Um, yes, yeah, th there's another interesting experiment here too. Um, and it's one of the things that I think the crypto learned over the last couple of years is that um, in a rush from one polar opposite to the other. Um, Everybody thought, but you know what? Uh, humans are too flawed. We need to have algorithms governing us, and then. Uh, horrible realization that those algorithms don't care about humans and so maybe we shouldn't have algorithms governing us so therefore we have to go we have to burn all the algorithms smash the machines and then we have to go back to human governance and then humans collude and they're easily corruptible and all the rest of it and i think that you know, there's an interesting uh, evolution happening in the DAO space right now that you can see signs of where people are realizing that what you actually need is the optimal uh point in that spectrum not one end or the other so uh, guardrails with algorithms. So if you need something to be incorruptible, give that little piece to an algorithm. If you need something to have a judicial layer, then you give that piece to humans because that's the way it's probably going to be for a long, long time. So it'll be interesting to watch the uh, the uh, committee get together and decide, you know, you know what the source credit algo works great for this stuff, but uh, for we also think that these things are great, but we don't. The only way that we know whether something is great or not is a human has to look at it and go, yep, that's great, all right. And then we can maybe allocate some rewards based on 
uh, human decision making processes as well. You know, just as a quick follow up note, like it's at the end of the day, when we're handing out die based on some calculation, and so we can have lots of factors go into that calculation beyond just what source credit is doing. So just a closing thought. Love to have chats about other questions or immediate well, concerns wanna... or things that we should do like right from the get go. Like, I don't want to take away from the committee's work, but like, I am hopeful that the committee that will be meeting next Friday is also already here in this call. I have a question. Actually. Yeah. So I think on one of the slides it said that the payouts will be private, and I'm wondering if I understood that correctly. So um the amounts so the final amount of diet based on the cred that's being allocated to individuals is is not going to be published is that true or what does it mean by private yeah my my intention for that was to be a point of discussion in our community meeting and uh, whether or not we want to include the actual diet payouts or not in in the spreadsheet or not um and the reason i positioned the meeting for next week is that it would occur prior to our first round of payouts so we would have an opportunity to get together and actually discuss that and other any other points so that i hope that clears it up how is it going to be possible though? like the algorithm is known the cred scores are known the pool size is known the opt-ins or opt-outs are known so like yeah any, anybody can calculate basic... it sure it's just whether or not we're just putting it in the in the spreadsheet so privacy really uh to get down to it it's there really is uh you know um yeah it's 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 an open source data set right so if, if anybody looks at how we're calculating it they can calculate it themselves well i'd love to hear from the group here because the um, transparency versus privacy is that's the tension right um and lots of people in the world have different opinions about you know salaries should all be uh freely available to anybody who's interested in, in the places in europe where that's just the way the world has always worked and don't worry about it um in the west it's a scandalous notion i think largely um but with uh this type of mechanism that we're talking about it's a community managed treasury with a committee that is figuring out how much is giving being allocated based on what criteria to which people um, and so I'm, I guess the question in my mind is, uh, is that a, a, a mechanism that requires some transparency or should have a built in? So, um, Chris, I think that you probably have some thoughts. Yeah. I, when I checked out research hub, one of the things that was interesting and, uh, I thought pretty, uh, inviting was the ranking board in that they, they have their uh, contributors ranked and I, I don't think it actually shows how much they got paid but if we had something along those lines where it's like a running leaderboard it does give the sense that there is something larger that we're contributing to that we're being recognized for while also um, even even earlier when Loretta's like I want to pass Chris there's this sense of like if we are the ones in control of the game that like when when gamification happens when people turn things into games they create their own rules whereas if we turned it into a game and have the rules where there's the leaderboard and we're the ones that decide who's number one and who's number five um then i do think that that adds some incentive structure around which people can re recognize where they fall and then start to set goals as to where they want to be so I do think there is some benefit in having a transparent ranking board, but it doesn't necessarily have to show the money. Um, but that's where, like, the level of transparency is up, up, you know, obviously to the committee. But I, I do personally see benefit in having some level of transparency with the with the source credit list on the on the actual form itself. Well, there's yeah, there's some mechanisms there to be considered too. Like there's the uh, competition. That's fine. Like if that motivates people to give us, uh, you know, really deep and insightful content, that's that's awesome. Uh, also, how do we talk about the fact that we have a source grade implementation without talking about why that might be a compelling option for people? 
that are looking to allocate their time effectively uh, without talking about the disbursements. I think that would be a challenge as well. Um, and there's this notion, well, at least in my mind, there's a notion if the community is managing a treasury, then there needs to be some kind of auditing or transparency about how those funds are allocated, right? So if we're talking about gamification, how do we know that um, money isn't getting lost or misallocated and stuff? One thing to comment on the idea of a dashboard is definitely something that we've been thinking about. And in the Scurf.io portal project, it's something that I, I would love to see be realized. Uh, it may show up somewhere else in the in-between, but yeah, we're definitely, I'm personally would love to have a dashboard that would have more of a real-time display of what's going on here. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I know that uh, Fotis has some experience with this as well. Like he mentioned in the comment um, in chat here, but also he has a really good comment in the discussion about what source cred does. Um, well, I'd love to hear from that Fotis. Do, but yeah. Do you have uh, access to a mic? Is where yeah. we'd be deeply interested in anybody's experience. Yeah, we can hear. You. Yeah. Um, what What specifically do you want to know? This This it's multifaceted. There's a lot of stuff to say about it. Yeah, I just looked at the time as I asked you that question. I realized we have six minutes left. And if I knew you had experience, <laughs> I would have been grilling you 10 minutes ago. So, um, well, I guess general satisfaction level, I suppose, or, or any enormous red flags or things that you wish you guys knew at the beginning of your journey with SourceGrad would be interesting. You know, I'm putting you on the spot. Well, I wasn't there from the start of the implementation. And it, there has been a serious amount of tweaking going on. And it's still not, uh, we are aware it's still not operating optimally in terms of uh, what we value. But is I'd say it's like pretty close though, because people have been very satisfied with the way they work uh, and the way the community values the work and the whole systems that, and it's, uh, it is not different from the whole, uh way we have implemented like the, the this the specific way that it is bespoken and is like customized to our own needs i think this is like the deal breaker the whole software thing because we have uh this specific channels that are specifically weighted uh according to uh, what people have been uh expressing and, and and so uh this this i cannot get into the details of the whole system but it also has to do not only with the algorithm itself but how the um, uh discourse forum and the discord is itself structured to have like this channels for reporting that are more higher weighted uh like we also have this emoji nomics system uh where for some specific tasks that people have done that they report in a specific channel that's called for example data thing we have this data thing channel where you do something we have a specific format uh and you follow the format and you just post it and it automatically uh pops up some uh emojis and you can choose one of these emojis and they have different weights so people value the specific thing that somebody did in this channel uh in a very uh fine-tuned way i'd say that's very and this has also been going on in the source cred um server and other servers and there are other um, communities that have used source cred. all right well i feel like i should put you on a spot and get you to commit to being our personal source cred consultant but i won't do that to you <laughs> in a recorded call um but um we would love to reach out to you actually in chat or maybe Paul, and, and we can get into a call with you, Fotis, and maybe we can pick your brain for a while and see if we can get, get some theories or some, yeah, yeah, of course. some best practices. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I really appreciate that. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head it back to you, Paul, if you want to put a bow on this for us or let us know what next steps are going to look like. Maybe you can encourage people to join the committee. Sure. Uh, that was going to be the thing I was obviously going to do. Uh, so yeah, so look for an announcement for next Friday when we'll have the first community meeting. Um, I'm very hopeful that a large chunk of people who are in this community call today would be joining that and um, giving us some insights into what 
they kind of think about this particular instance that we're doing and what levers we can start looking at and we can start kind of doing some uh, data because Brian is going to be there as well and so we can maybe run some quick experiments during that call. Um, next steps is we're going to basically take some of this summary stuff and um, put it into the thread that currently exists. Brian and I are working on the how to um, how to source cred documentation, kind of capturing all this, giving people summaries uh, so that we as an organization can always be um, transparent in what has happened in the past so that people know why we are what we are in the future. And um, yeah, I mean, ultimately it's now I think transitioning from let's try out a thing to let's maintain a thing and the let's maintain a thing I think is even more exciting. So the committee I think is going to be incredibly important and it does really cool scurf stuff and web three stuff. And so I'm super pumped about that. Thank you. Thanks for that, Paul. That was a great presentation. Really looking forward to this. This, this is a huge transition for us um, and it's going to lead to, uh, it's a good experiment. We can, uh, there's lots of experiments here, but um, based on the outcome of these experiments, there's even cooler experiments to come. So I really like the idea of communities owning uh, their own treasuries and allocating their resources back to them each other based on their uh, criteria so this is a big thing all right thanks everybody for joining us um we'll be posting a link to this video in twitter and in chat so if you wanted to uh show friends and family or revisit things um please feel free to do so thanks everybody for uh sharing your time with us Thank you for everybody for your thoughts.